Hello everybody, this is Pastor T here and I'm talking today about the difference between pastors versus preachers. And I would like to start off with the text of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 where he is giving a prophecy of the New Testament to come. He says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart which will which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done. Shall that be done? anymore and he is prophesying of the new covenant that comes about when Jesus dies and rises again and he speaks of that again concerning our relationship with Christ with us being under grace and no longer under the law um, he also goes into detail about that in Hebrews but that is an entirely different subject altogether I would like to focus on the prophecy of pastors and how they are different and not necessarily the same as a preacher. Um, the idea of a preacher, whenever a preacher is mentioned in the Bible, is a preacher of the gospel to the unbelieving, to the unknowing. Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him? in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher he didn't say pastor he said preacher and listen to what he says in 15 and, all sh and how shall they preach except they be sent and as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So we see that he says that there are how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Preachers were called to preach the gospel. They were not called to minister to unbelievers but to go out unto the world to the highways and the byways and the sideways to declare the gospel to the unbelieving and what would happen was God would literally perform miracles to verify the word as truth. Even when you look up the word evangelist in our dictionary the definition of evangelist is actually a preacher. It's in the definition of evangelist, not pastor. When you look up the definition of pastor in the Webster Dictionary, it says shepherd. And we see that Jesus constantly referred to himself as the good shepherd. But Jesus also preached. But keep in mind, he never preached to the disciples. He always preached to the unknowing and the unbelieving, to the unsaved. Um, when God talks about distributing the gift, um, he mentioned evangelists and pastors and I believe it's in Ephesians chapter 4 <clears throat> and you'll see that he makes a distinction that some of the gifts were to be operated within the church and some without. We need to have a clear understanding of what the gifts are and how they operate because a preacher however can be a pastor and a pastor can be a teacher. I, a preacher. I'm a pastor, but I also preach to the law. But it's important to understand where you're supposed to be operating in that gift. <clears throat> Let me look, I'll find Ephesians. I'm sorry. Okay, so he says in Ephesians chapter 11, I gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers and it says that pastors and teachers can be one and the same and that's true because even in Jeremiah we read it they were to give knowledge and understanding 
and that is one of the ways in doing that is by teaching. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So those are three different reasons why all of these gifts are um, given so that we can become perfected. <clears throat> the work of the ministry, we can work in building the kingdom of God, and for the edifying of the church. And we see that those different gifts actually work in different ways to do that. Certain gifts work more in some areas, and certain gifts work better in others. For example, for the perfecting of the saints, we see that teaching is for that purpose. Um, Paul mentions in another scripture that he uh, teaches and ministers and preach to perfect the saints, to bring about perfection. So teaching them with the word of God is a form of correcting. For the work of the ministry is evangelizing, going out there spreading the gospel. Even apostles work hand in hand with evangelists because according to the Bible, See, we have it backwards today. We start a church, then we preach. But according to the word of God, if you read Acts, they always preach first. And then started the church. And it's like, um, they did it the opposite. They went out and preached to the unbelievers. And when they became saved, the apostles came and established the ministry. And they elected pastors, which are also shepherds by definition, or overseers, or elders. And then they moved on and did it all over again. That was the work of an apostle. And they worked hand in hand with the evangelists. And a lot of times they operated as an evangelist. Um, Paul said he doesn't even preach in areas that had already been, the gospel had already been preached. That makes, that says the statement in itself. He said, he didn't say he didn't, he, he doesn't go to, areas where they are already preaching the gospel. He said where they have already preached. Like they've already done it, it's over. They've brought, they're already operating in a church. I'm, I, I'm not going there. And that, like I said, that says something in itself that he would not even go to an area who, where they had already preached. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, if you look up the word evangelist just in a regular Webster dictionary, I have the, you know, the big red Webster dictionary from 1970, and it literally, in evangelist, it says preacher. And if you look up the word pastor, it literally says shepherd. And he gives us several examples of, of what a shepherd does and the difference between a shepherd. Pastors are obligated to watch over the souls of the people. Hebrews chapter, um, I believe it was 17, I'm sorry, 13 verse 17. <clears throat> Paul is giving instruction and he says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch over your souls and they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So they were to watch over, and the preacher does not necessarily have a preacher, and nowhere in the scripture does it say the preacher has to be accountable for anybody's soul. A preacher has to proclaim the gospel, and I, I think about it sometimes, that is why so many preachers have these loud, strong, brassy voices. They don't belong on the pulpit. They belong on the streets, on the highways and the byways where there's noise and distraction. God gave them those big, strong voices to yell, even as John the Baptist did in the wilderness, saying, Repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God gave preachers those big, loud voices to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim the good news. It was, you know, a teacher couldn't do that. Uh, you know, everyone can't go out. I know if I try to go out on the corner and speak, people can't barely hear me across the room sometimes. And I know they couldn't hear me <laughs> on the corner. And, you know, and I'm saying that if we go back to doing it the way God intended, 
maybe we would see the miracles that they saw in the Bible because back then they preached and God's Spirit performed miracles to proclaim it because they were amongst unbelievers. But now we only preach to the saved and already believing. Why do God need to perform miracles when you're doing it amongst Christians? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that a preacher operated in a church at all. Every time, if you even do a search, every time he mentions a preacher, it's to the lost, the unsaved. They are not accountable for your soul. A pastor is. And a pastor does not necessarily preach. And they definitely don't preach to you. So, we look in Acts when the church first started, when the Holy Spirit first came down and engulfed the disciples and turned them, transformed them into apostles. <clears throat> it's something very interesting. Um, Paul Peter says, in verse three, chapter 3, verse 20, he said, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by mouth of his holy prophecies since the world began. Notice he uses preach when he's talking to people who are not saved. But if you flip over in the next chapter, I believe, he talks, uh, they were talking about um, setting up people to take over the ministries of helping the widows. And he uses, it's in chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. He says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of holy ghost and wisdom, whom we will whom we may appoint over this business of ministry. When they say ministry, they're meaning, you know, giving food and taking care of the, the needs of the congregation. He said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And notice, now just in the previous chapter, when referring to unbelievers, he used the word preach. And in the next chapter, in verse 6, he uses the word ministry. They were ministering the word, and that's different. Ministry is feeding. Preaching is declaring. Now, how many of you know if you have a baby, can you picture a six-month-old baby? This is preaching. Literally taking the baby food and throwing it at the baby's face. You're throwing it at the baby's face. That is preaching. You're throwing the word of God. You're throwing the gospel out there, hoping someone who has ears to hear will hear. Feeding is actually taking the spoon and feeding them. Feeding them. That's a process where they become nourished. And it does not only include food. It, it, when you look up the definition of feed, it means to give nourishment to to grow, for something to grow into maturity. That, that includes cleaning, washing, watching, disciplining, um, and not only giving them food. So that is a whole process of maturing, of maturing of that individual, maturing of that sheep, of that babe into a mature Christian. That is different than just preaching the gospel on the pulpit and literally throwing the food out. Because you can throw food at a baby's face all you want, but that it will not get in their body and nourish them. That's different. Then that's not what you do to believers. That's not what you do to them. You do that for the unbelieving. You throw the word out. You declare it. You let it out. So we have to understand the difference in that. And that's why Peter used two different words. If they were all the same, he would have said, let us, you know, c continually pray and preach the word of God. But he didn't say that. He said, minister the word of God. But in referring to speaking to unbelievers, he said, preach. So hopefully this will just give a little bit of thought and insight. And remember, God ordained for us to have pastors and not preachers over the church and over our soul.
because preachers, according to the word of God, is nowhere in the Bible obligated to watch over you. And they will not have to give an account to you. It's easy to preach to 500 members, to 10,000 members, to 7,000 people, to a million people. You can preach to an unnumerous amount of people. But pastoring, that is a whole different story. And we see in Proverbs, he speaks about it. I'm going to just try to find it right off 